In order to celebrate the 450th anniversary, we decided that the best way of doing that was to have an exhibition of the company, its history and its craft, both in the past, but also talking about what the company does today. The Worshipful Company of Joiners and Sealers has a very long history and we date back to um, well before the 15th century. In fact, the earliest written records of the company uh, were 1400. Uh, but the most significant date for, for the Worshipful Company was when it was created as a Worshipful Company and that was in 1571 when we were granted a royal charter by Queen Elizabeth I. And that was important because the royal charter established the company as a company one that is able to own land and enter into contracts and all that sort of thing. One of the great treasures of the Worshipful Company of Joiners and Sealers is a very fine painting that used to hang in the courtroom, actually above the fireplace of the old hall when Joiners Hall was in existence. And it's a fine oil painting that was painted towards the end of the 17th century and depicts the Court of Assistance, which is the executive committee of the company, looking at the plans for their new hall. The Joiners Hall was burnt down during the Great Fire of London, and so this painting sort of commemorates the, the planning that went into building the new hall. We do not know who painted it, uh, but nevertheless, it is a 17th century painting, and it's one that connects us as liverymen today to the liverymen of yesterday, and that makes it special for all of us. The Worshipful Company of Joiners and Sealers is one of the ancient uh, livery companies of the City of London. The ancient livery companies were originally trade guilds and they controlled their trade uh, within the City of London. Uh, and that made them very powerful because you couldn't actively practice a trade uh, without being a member of the livery company. And because wood joinery and wood carving was uh, such an important craft and one widely used, uh, the Joiners and Sealers was a very big company uh, in those days. Joints in wood evolved of the need for uh, greater complexity in the use of wood. Here we have an example of uh, dovetail joints. In this particular instance, the, the, these would have been used and still are used mainly in the furniture industry. A similar joint is also used in construction where added strength is required, um, just on the corner of a roof uh, construction. Here we have um, six examples of timber, which is probably most commonly used today in joinery. European oak, ash, uh, Caribbean mahogany, which is actually called Honduras mahogany and Iroko, which is an African wood. This display provides uh, a good example of the wide range of tools used for joinery and carving. These two saws are American distant, they were probably made at the turn of the 20th century, very much in demand when they were made, and, and even today, um, joiners love to get their hands on them. Um, this is a... a a plane, an English made plane by Norris, late 19th century. Here we have some carving tools, and it's interesting this one is a more up to date one uh, and it's Swiss made, but very popular amongst the, the carving uh, profession. These are two fine examples of modern day wood carving by Tony Webb, who is a master carver. They were made for St Paul's Cathedral and they are copies of some of Brendan Gibbon's work. Th these are two fine examples which demonstrate that the carving skills still exist today. The most magnificent wall comprises two master's chairs made 267 years apart the original master's chair was made by a gentleman who was a, a master of our company, uh, Edward Newman, uh, circa 1750. Uh, and the style is very much um, along the lines of Chippendale. 
The exhibition also features a minute book from the company's archives. There's an entry from 1755 which shows a Mr. Edward Newman, who was a master of the company, being paid 27 pounds and six shillings for a magnificent chair. The chair is in the exhibition. It's the first time that these two objects have been brought together. At 27 pounds and six shillings, that's about 6,000 pounds today. That's a bargain when you look at the chair with its ornate Gothic arches. This year in our uh, anniversary, we uh, commissioned to have a new chair made. The design was developed by several of the li uh, liverymen uh, and the woods chosen are mainly English um, and in particular there, there is some bog oak which was found in the fens fairly recently um, and that's been laying there for thousands of years. There's also a section which celebrates some of the things that have been made today by joiners and woodcarvers, including part of a staircase, a small wooden window, a small door made by students, and a recorder. Instruments are also made by woodcarvers. Perhaps that's not something that's widely known by people. The Worshipful Company of Joiners and Sealers is as important today as it was back in the 16th, 15th, you know, 14th century, because uh, the, the skill of wood joinery and wood carving is just as relevant today as it was all those years ago. And the company uh, maintains the craft standards particularly and ensures excellence in the craft. And we promote the craft and encourage young people to, um, to take up the craft and to carry those great skills forward from generation to generation. And, and we've done that for 600 years and we will be continuing to do that in the future.